Summit, and uh, it's really nice to talk with you today. Uh, thank you so much for having me out, Rhett. You know, yeah. myself and my musical partner, L.A. Jenkins, mm -hmm. you know, I've had a great time here in San Francisco playing with um, some of the local artists and meeting a lot of new people and having lots of fun making new music. Yeah, yeah. So tell me, um, uh, what was it uh, that brought you into music, or, was, or what, what, when did you start playing music? Well, I'd have to go all the way back to when I was in high school, mm -hmm. uh, 1966, 67. Uh, I was working in a hospital, and um, there was an orderly, you know, who was a jazz drummer, mm -hmm. who worked as a jazz drummer at night, you know, worked there in the hospital during the day. And uh, he and I got into a conversation at some point, you know, about jazz. He told me, well, these are the people you should listen to. He just suggested, like Yusef Latif, John Coltrane, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Eric Dolphy, you know, and various other groups, you know, and people. And I started, you know, to pick up some of these albums, you know, and listen to them. I was probably a little bit ahead of my time, you know, being in high school, everybody else was listening to just regular R&B, you know, which I, you know, liked that too because it was the mainstay right. or the main stem, you know, of mm -hmm. most of our musical connection along with gospel music, you know, from the church. Mm -hmm. You know, but I found that there was something extraordinarily uh, interesting you know, more interesting about jazz in itself, you know, that there was the element of experimentation. Mm. And there was the element of the uh, jazz musician taking an actual piece that may have been familiar before and actually changing it, you know, to fit a different mode of understanding. Mm -hmm. You know, and I found this to be uh, part and parcel to improvisation. So improvisation became really uh, part of my whole ideal of what I thought to be music that it wasn't just played straight across you know as always but add something of yourself to it mm -hmm. uh, later on uh, after high school around 1968 69 I came in contact with a group we call a black unity trio you know who had a record store near where I lived there in Cleveland, yeah, in Cleveland. and uh, in the basement they used to practice you know after uh, sales or after the store closed and I found it amazing some of the music that they were playing mm -hmm. you know was so similar to some of the things that John Coltrane and some of the other artists had played. This is a time when I became aware of Sun Ra, uh, Sonny Simmons, mm -hmm. Albert Ayler, you know who was also from my hometown of Cleveland, mm -hmm. you know who's uh, the bass player who traveled with him you mm -hmm. know I know personally you know mm -hmm. and actually he was one of my mentors you mm -hmm. know through the music as well as other spiritual experiences, mm -hmm. you know, so um, I've come to find out that through the music, uh, a person reaches their own voice, because mm -hmm. at that time I picked up the alto and oh, okay. started playing around 68, so 69. Your first instrument. Yes, yes, right. and um, I took somewhat of a hiatus from mm -hmm. that to participate in my, you know, art practice. Right. I'm a visual artist also. Right, you're you know, also a painter? Yes, yeah. yes, painter, abstract, graphic designs, mm -hmm. you know, uh, sculptures, you know, some small sculptures, mm -hmm. but mostly abstract painting with acrylic on canvas. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, after realizing that art is uh, one composite, mm -hmm. a possibly spoken word, music, and visual arts, you know, I started to kind of combine the two, you know, and had more or less of a, a combination of things. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. I even worked with some members from that same group, the Black Unity Trio oh, okay. there in Cleveland. Uh, first gig, I could, guess mm -hmm. you could call it, was mm -hmm. at the Friendly Inn. Oh, when which was, was that? A, this was in 1971. 71. Yeah, it was in Cleveland, and it's a, a recreation center, you know, that was a, a, a spot where kids could come to get off the street, you know, stay out of trouble, that mm -hmm. type of thing, you know. And occasionally they had community organized mm -hmm. uh, performances, of which I participated in. And at this particular performance, I had an eight by four piece of paneling you know, that I had done um, a strategically planned universal scene on. In other oh, words, it was okay. a scene that I uh, went up on a fire escape when I was right. in an art school and 
threw the paint down and went down and then worked it into different uh, dry brush techniques so that it looked like comets and asteroids and planets mm -hmm. and stars, you know, it was on a black background. And we had that up in front of us while we were playing. Oh, wow. You know, and I was able to introduce a new tune, you know, that I had been composing mm -hmm. called El Maghrib, you know, which I played on oboe, mm -hmm. you know, at the time. But since that time, you know, I spent some time in New York and uh, came in exposure to live performances mm -hmm. from Sun Ra and from Pharaoh Saunders, mm -hmm. which inspired me even more. Mm -hmm. So upon my return to Cleveland and eventually uh, living in Columbus, mm -hmm. I um, met some other people who were playing the same music with what was known then as the Outpost Music Collective. Mm -hmm. This is later years now, in about mm -hmm. 2005. Mm. Uh, Gerard Cox, you know, and some other people, but right. especially Gerard Cox because he was uh, more or less the initiator mm. of this particular group. Mm -hmm. And since then it has morphed into what is now known as the Elevation Arts Project. Mm -hmm. And we have, um, through the past, I'd say, seven or eight years, had some very interesting groups mm -hmm. and individuals, you know, to come to Columbus to perform. Mm -hmm. And I have performed, you know, with them, you know, in that time. It, uh, they really sparked me back into... Uh, playing once again, you know, around 2007, right. when I went on tour with Ryan Jewell uh, and Tom Abs, Ryan oh, Jewell's yeah. local drummer, which mm -hmm. you know, you know, because we you recorded the, on your the, label, the Rejuvenation yeah. Trio. Yes, Rejuvenation Trio, right. and the name of the the uh, particular album, Rejuvenation Voyage, mm -hmm. you know, which was like a compilation of a number of works that had been, you know, put together over the years from mm -hmm. 2005 up to 2007. So you took some, you took quite a chunk of time off from playing music uh, to do your art. Yes. Um, so yes. it sounds like you, you began uh, music back yeah, sometime around the turn of the century. Is that, you know, or uh, the I guess you could say turn of the century. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, technically. That's, that's, that's an interesting term. Yeah. When you hear about it, you know, historically, yeah. you, you don't think about being uh, in the midst of that when right. you actually were. You yeah. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and oftentimes I look at that as being like time is moving a lot faster than we can realize you know, and we're running to keep up with it, but at the same time, we're creating our own continuum. Mm, you that's know? true, So yeah. in the process of doing that, I've tried to create my own voice right. on the instrument, you know, because yeah. I've been told that every uh, instrument has a voice, mm -hmm. you know, and I believe that mine has a particular voice because I believe that the individual must put himself into mm -hmm. the music. Mm -hmm. But yes, during that hiatus, I think it was... Uh, I think it was a necessary break that I needed to really stand back for a minute and see exactly where the music was going, you know. And it gave me time also to find so, somewhat of a, a spot or a place, you know, in that continuum that we talked about because there was really not a lot of people that I knew, you know, who were trying to play this music, mm. you know, until I, you know, came to Columbus. Right. So and met, you know, the people, you know, with that group. Yeah. So, uh, and it's just been rolling ever since because, right. you know, coming here to the Bay Area, you know, I've met quite a few people, mm -hmm. you know, who are acquainted with the same type of uh, understanding, you right. know, who uh, are amenable, you know, to possibly collaborations, you know, and other types of uh, investigative, you know, explorations, you know, along those same lines. Mm -hmm. So, uh, have you done a lot of composition? It's, uh, you, you're, you're talking about your first piece. Well, I, I have to say that my musical background yeah. has not uh, been comprised of written music, right. Right. notes, but uh, things that I've felt from inside. Sure. You know, and these right. things that I've felt from inside, I have been able to transfer them yeah. to a sound pattern or right. a soundscape, you know, yeah. which a chart, you know, would be more, you know, applicable you know, to the type of things that, so that everybody understood yeah. exactly where we were going with the sound, you know, yeah. and with the help of other people, you know, who are more acquainted you yeah. know, with that area, you know, I've been able to accomplish, you know, yeah. some pretty well-rounded, you know, sound yeah. and um, I'd say improvisations, you know, as well as uh, computations of my sound right. or what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling. Right, you know? right. Yeah. So you've been working within context of of uh, spontaneous composition and also uh, 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 descriptive yes you know, compositional yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. and and mm -hmm. from, from what I'm hearing it sounds like visual yes. uh, uh, descriptive uh, support to, to yes. help to portray those, uh, those exactly the, yeah. the, the skeletal uh, aspect uh, of the pieces mm -hmm. you, you might say that I've uh, traded or have traded back and forth the brush for the horn uh -huh. you know and right. the music is the canvas I see you know, yeah. and, and in that way you know the colorful
powerful um, array of thoughts, you know, are displayed either visually mm -hmm. or, you know, audibly. Right. You know, either exactly. way. Yeah, know. exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so um, uh, tell us uh, what you're, uh, you're looking to do uh, uh, in the next, you know, maybe a few coming years or you have uh, a projects you're currently working in and well, what your future um, plans are. Currently, uh, I have a, a project in mind that I would like to see a uniting of forces, so mm -hmm. to speak. When I say forces, I mean forces that are in a positive vein, mm -hmm. you know, between the West Coast, Detroit, Chicago, Cleveland, Toledo, mm -hmm. Columbus, and possibly New York, mm -hmm. you know. And that's not my personal goal to be famous or anything right. of that nature in those right. areas, but to bring the musicians together mm -hmm. who are interested in uh, furthering this project, mm -hmm. you know. In other words, putting the music out there so more people can hear it so that more people can become exposed to it, mm -hmm. you know, and that possibly even establishing some type of um, uh, academic, mm -hmm. you know, field, whereas mm -hmm. there may be people amongst the group, you know, who are willing to teach, who are willing to share and give their time, you know, so that uh, we can bring up more young people into this understanding or at least orient them, mm -hmm. you know, to let them know that there's something out here that's different. Because mm -hmm. there's so many young people who would love to get involved and things who are music students, you know, yeah. who are interested uh, in music, you know, and they really don't have a lot of direction, you right. know, I don't think, because the alternatives that are offered by the music industry, <laughs> you know, very much limit, you mm -hmm. know, where you can go with it, you mm -hmm. know, unless you follow a particular standard. Yeah, the information isn't necessarily given out to in no. order for that discovery to occur. No, no. So no, you're talking not. about like kind of a cross regional network working community. Yes, and yeah. that's in the way of performance as well as in the way of, you know, education, mm -hmm. uh, community, you know, outreach, you mm -hmm. know, so that there's a lot of people, you know, who would love to have some uh, particular project to be involved in, yeah. you know, so, if, you know, if we can create that project, you know, we can create that outlet for them, mm -hmm. I think it would be a wonderful thing for a lot of people. Because you're and involved with that now in Columbus. Right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. the, uh, the uh, Elevation Arts Project, you know, expands more than just music, you know, we have uh, different programs that we try to reach uh, young people in the way of uh, orientation. Uh, we have different projects that we are working on that actually help individuals, individual musicians, you know, who may be struggling, you know, that type of thing, you know, that if, if we can't help them financially, we at least try to seek, you know, some financial aid. Mm -hmm. And that's on a national level, mm -hmm. because on a national level, there's so many musicians who don't have a pension plan. You know, no. who don't have medical care, right. you know, and these things are a true uh, fact of life, you know, for everybody, you know, mm -hmm. as you age, you know, you're going to require these things, yeah. you know, in some way. So if, if there's nothing set up for you, you know, then uh, you have to either fend for yourself mm -hmm. or if there's any type of organization established, then that would be the fallback, you sure. know, for, and that's what we're trying to work towards, oh, okay. you know, because yeah. there's been, we've lost so many musicians, you know, yeah. so many great people. You know, that uh, it would be a shame that the people who are left, who are still struggling, you know, would not receive any aid mm -hmm. from those people who believe mm -hmm. in the same goals and objectives mm -hmm. that they have, you know. So that's, you know, part and parcel of what, you know, I'd like to see done. Okay. Yeah. And at the same time, yeah. furthering the, the um, independent record label right. that you have. Oh, yeah. And to try to find as many people, you know, as possible who may not be aware of edge tone, mm -hmm. you know, and its advantages, you know, and the advantages of that project, you know, to try to, you know, further uh, communicate with them, you know, and encourage them in that direction, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Because I, I feel like it, we're in touch with the universe. Mm -hmm. All of us have uh, molecules and, mm -hmm. and, and, and chromosomes and things that are functioning, you know, that are in tune with the universe. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of us bringing all those things into the right type of harmony mm -hmm. so that they work together, you know. Right. It's uh, like when I meet people, you know, quite often they think that they, man, I know you from somewhere, I met you before, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that the souls were created in mm -hmm. acquaintance with one another mm -hmm. before they were placed into the bodies. Mm -hmm. So that later on when we meet each other, we already know each other, <laughs> you know. Right. So we're, we're really working towards the same objectives, you know. We just have to bring it into fruition, okay. you know, make it happen. And, and you're also you have 
current uh, music project as well. Um, yeah. Wizards, right? Yeah, there's um, yeah. a current project that I'm working on. Hopefully, you know, we can get it, you know, rolling. Mm -hmm. Myself, L.A. Jenkins, right. and um, uh, the uh, drummer who helped us put it together, Adam yeah. Smith. Okay. You know, and uh, the name of the album is Intrusion. Oh, okay. you know, and hopefully, you know, we'll be able to get that, you know, across mm -hmm. and release it soon on Edge Tone. Oh, well, that, yeah. that'd be fine. That's, yeah, sure. yeah, that's one of our <laughs> projects. That's what we're working towards. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and I noticed, uh, like I said, you, you have a group called the Wizards, right? You yes, and Wizards is another group. That's yeah. myself, um, Anthony Jacobs, Adam Smith, and Gerard Cox. Oh, okay. And Gerard Cox plays piano, um, Adam Smith drums, right. and Anthony Jacobs on trombone, okay. flute. And other various percussion. Right. I play bass clear, bass clarinet, uh -huh. uh, tenor, and alto. Okay. You know, on oh. those same you know resin. So selections. Uh, you uh, you also uh, play some cello, as I recall. Yes. Yeah. yeah Process yeah. cello also. Uh -huh. yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there other instruments and, we don't um, know about? Kungas. Okay. And play kungas. Yeah. Okay. There's um, an ongoing project that I have with uh, myself and another poet called Truth Serum mm. that we perform quite often at uh, a lot of community. Organizations, uh, some uh, one in particular being Cinnamon Sweets. Mm -hmm. It's a group of ladies who've gotten together and they perform at the Martin Luther King Center mm -hmm. uh, every second Saturday in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, okay. You know, and you know we more or less perform. You know, mm -hmm. if uh, the person's name who's the poet is Michael Condit. Mm -hmm. You know, and if he doesn't perform, then there are other poets. You know that I play. You know to accompany also. Right. Oh, yeah. excellent. Okay, so you're involved in the, in the poetry yes. scene as well. Yes, yeah, oh, very excellent. much so. so. And that even more so before I became a, a musician, oh. before I started playing horn, you yeah. know, I was involved with that as far back as uh, in Cleveland in 68 at the uh, Thurgood Marshall Recreation Center. Uh -huh. You know, there was um, a group that met there every um, Saturday night, you know, and poets would bring their, their words and their paper you know, someone was playing the piano, we had a bass player, you know, and possibly a horn player, and that was the real inspiration along those lines, you know. Of course, you know, I, I go back to the beatnik years sure. anyway, you know, right. in the 50s, you know, when all that really started in the coffee right. houses and everything, you right. know. So that, that's still very much alive, you know, yeah. in another sense, you know, okay. and even today. Wow. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. I, I appreciate you uh, having some time to talk with me before you head back on to Columbus. I appreciate being here. Thank you so much for having us out. I had a Absolutely. great time. Yeah, it was, a, it was some really good shows, and I'm sure we'll be hearing uh, more of you in the future. I hope so, so. yes. Yeah. Definitely so. Great. Well, thanks a lot. Well, thank you. <laughs>